the alternative calendar. I just assume <coughs> it has to be in the alternative calendar. But that's what I defer seeing. Well, I mean, we've talked at the calendar committee. We discussed the fact that the board wants to see collaboration, but I think it all went into the alternative calendar. There is a way. Now, <coughs> granted, you know, I hate to put up a, something that just looks inconceivable to the teachers to vote on, and then you have the alternative calendar that we've been proposing pretty much the last two years, and that's how you get that switch. But if we're that wanting that wanting it that much, I think that's the, what we need to direct the calendar committee to do next year in the traditional calendar. That's something that meets all of the agreement requirements um, and still provides for the collaboration. I mean, everybody in that committee knew we wanted collaboration. It was just how do we get there? And I don't know if the discussion was there that much during the discussion of the traditional calendar because we were just going off of you know, variations of the same thing without twisting it too much. And we probably just need to probably look at the traditional side. You can just like it says it's traditional, that means it follows the agreement. I'm glad you brought that up because I hadn't been thinking that way, but it makes perfect sense. And my my rebuttal question back to you is, do you think we should wait a year to do that versus sending it back to the committee this year? I think we need to wait a year. <coughs> okay. Tim, I'd really like to hear what your thoughts are since you served on the committee. Well, I, I think I said them last time, but you know, I think the committee understood that we wanted collaboration, but a lot of the talk that we were talking about, most of the schools are going to do collaboration, but they're all doing it different. The traditional calendar was going to put out specific times where everyone was doing collaboration on the same time so that they could do collaboration with other schools. So second graders could go and collaborate with all second graders instead of just their own school. So I think the... Uh, that was a non-traditional calendar? Uh, yeah. I think the calendar we have now, I think there's collaboration going on in the schools. It's just not what maybe the district wants to be going on. So I, you know, because you hear uh, Garfield, you know, they had great collaboration. And when we start talking about non-traditional people, I don't know how that would work because we, we're going to have to change some stuff because of those times. So my thought is that the calendar committee did what they were asked to. I think there was tons of discussion each week. And I, I think the calendar committee came up with the calendars, the teachers voted, and you know, I think we need to stick to that vote, personally. Granted, it, it might not go the way we all or some of us want it to go, but you know, there's, there's next year. I mean, it's pretty darn close. And I think part of it is there's still misunderstandings of what's going to take place during those Friday meetings. You know, I think the district needs to be saying, on this Friday we're going to do all grade level collaboration. The next Friday we're going to do end service. And, you know, have a calendar of what that Friday afternoon is going to be. Because I think there's still that unknown. And I think it has to be in paper saying, this is what we're going to do. So they say, well, you guys told us this is what we're going to do. You wrote it down. Now we're not doing it. That's just my thoughts. I don't know if that's what you wanted to hear. But that's no, I want to hear your thoughts. That's exactly <laughs> what I mean. Gee, you've already said anything else. No, I, I just think that out of 339 of our teachers didn't feel that the alternative calendar was going to enhance their collaboration with the other teachers. And, and so it's not really the board that, that needs to be sold on this. It needs to be the teachers. And the, to me, the only way to do that is building by building to make the time in those buildings when they do have an opportunity to collaborate really valuable to them and really useful so that they, they want more of it. 
following what's already happening in some of the schools given the opportunity and at their, their own pace and time. So I think uh, rather than forcing something, I think uh, it's still all rolling in a pretty good direction. Um, there's a few things that, are, that may change next year at the state level, what's negotiated. And I don't think that will change dramatically. I hope it doesn't. But some of that may change too. stood out to 39 to 281. Um, to go back and say, look at it again at this point, um, with the time constraints that we have when the negotiated agreements coming up, because we're, we're starting to meet this week on it now, um, I think we just stay the course. Good discussion. Motion. 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 further discussion? All those in favor, signal raising your hand. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Can I just make one, oh, I'm sorry, one Maybe <coughs> instead of using the wording traditional calendar, say negotiated agreement calendar, maybe that might change our mind, the calendar committee's mindset a little bit, that we're not looking at the same old, same old next year but doing something that completely follows the negotiated agreement. And then the alternative, obviously, is what doesn't follow the right. negotiated agreement. Yeah, that's the only distinction between the traditional as a calendar that has to meet the requirements of the agreement and the alternative calendar. We've even had suggestions to use the word collaborative calendar. <laughs> um, but I think those are the, I think that's the language that's used in the agreement, so that's the language sure try to do that and stretch the <coughs> stretch what the options look like and um, with that with that because the direction of the culture has certainly been rolling there uh, with that direction and maybe all we need is just a little more tweak or approach. along those lines um, would it be appropriate Dr. Kerwin if you could gather some information on um, the vote to find out um, what we can learn from the voters by what they didn't like or did like and so that we can yeah absolutely I think we could, we could get the calendar committee back together and um, and maybe generate some interest to go out and talk with staff members who voted about what did you like what did you not like what I mean, folks you're talking about 30 people here 30 yeah. people vote the other way and you're having a conversation about the alternative calendar thing so we're very close and, and I think as, as we move ahead and there's more understanding and value placed on that collaboration and resources in the state become more scarce, there's going to become more and more reasons to consider this. And so I, I, while well, I, I too, glory am disappointed that um, we're not going to have that opportunity to give this a try this year, I, I, I see us right on the brink of this. Sure. I, I see a lot of positive things going on. I like the direction we're going. I just don't tend to have a lot of patience. <laughs> and to wait a year for 30 votes right. is hard for me. But um, but going back to your question, yes, yeah. absolutely. That's something we could get the committee together. And I'm sure we'd have some volunteers that would be willing to go out in some schools and just sit down and ask the questions. Uh, yeah. And maybe we'll learn more that can help the committee develop better options for the calendar next year. Great. Let's learn about that. Is there something you could add to um, sort of our agenda when we go to faculty meeting? Um, just just that mm -hmm. that was always a topic we brought up, you know, what do you think about this or what do you like about this? Talking suggestion. point for one. 
That's a great idea. Thanks, Jim. Good. Good discussion. Okay, uh, we're ready for open discussion items. I would just like an, an update on where we are with uh, the open CFO position. Keith, do you have an update on that? We're at the CFO position. Any um, <coughs> interest or applications that you've seen lately? Um, we're still in the process of gathering applicants. Um, we've had two additional points of interest, I guess, but no official applications uh, other than what I've talked about last time. So if you did follow up with the applications you had last time, were they qualified and were you able to interview? Or We did do we did do interviews, and um, so the committee got together and we interviewed, and we're kind of in the process now of uh, discussing doing a follow-up interview uh, with one of those individuals. on travel and those kinds of things. So we're kind of in that process right now of one particular candidate. Um, the other two, we don't have anything official yet. Okay. Our uh, association of school boards, do they help with that type of a search? That, that position, the CFO position, is advertised in association of school boards. It's uh, advertised in the ASMO. It's advertised several places, but yes, they yes. don't do a formal search like they do for superintendents, but they do a posting that's out all over the state and beyond the state. Okay. We still have our, our contract that we have involved with the, the Chat County company, and they've not turned over any names at this point. Wow. Yeah. This is a very important position. Very important time. Yes, exactly. And is it just is it just a combination of our size, our location, and then the industry demands for that kind of expertise outside of school districts? Well, I think you're you have several factors. Uh, certainly, we're not the only school district that's looking. Perry uh, County is still looking. There's some districts in Kansas City that are still looking. So uh, I don't think it's Garden City. So if they're 
a high school student watching this and you enjoy math at any level whatsoever, go into accounting. Oh, that one? Oh, <laughs> I think your here. campus is well, the one. <laughs> this is one of these jobs we can't hire an entry level accountant back. We have to have an experienced accountant to come in here not only with their accounting skills, but also that can learn rapidly the school funding, school finance, and come up to speed. So, uh, you know, this isn't a beginning job. And you need some leadership qualities thrown in there, too. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're asking this person to do a lot of things in addition to accounting. We're asking him to manage the budget. We're asking him to do three or four different departments as well. As I get more information, you need to shift from the previous one in January about um, education and people realizing that um, we're having issues with that. Um, next one's March 21st. Uh, I don't know how well attended that one will be by teachers. I know I won't. 
be there because I'm going to be enjoying spring break. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're in town, please try and make it. Um, hopefully, we can get some of your pals there to hear some of our comments. So. Great. Thanks for going. I appreciate that. That's why Jane was there as well. Oh, good. Allotments implemented by Governor Brown that uh, reduced spending by one and a half percent the K-12 public school. According to the Kansas State Department of Education, this will result in a $470,000 loss in funding to Garden City Public Schools in this current budget. I previously stated at our last board meeting that these funds would come out of the district's capital outlay fund. I was incorrect. According to Dale Dennis, Deputy Commissioner of the Kansas State Department of Education, the $470,000 will automatically, automatically be taken from the district's general fund on March 7, 2015, unless otherwise notified by the state. At this time, and I emphasize that, this time, we do not anticipate any cuts in services <coughs> this year. However, this could change based upon decisions made by our governor and state legislature. And if you're keeping track of the bills that are being discussed out there, there are many bills out there that could be very hurtful to our mission. Now, I do stand behind the comments that I made in reference to capital improvements in the district. We always try to keep our buildings up. But over the last four years or so, and if you've been following, and all of you have been following program budget, <coughs> that reduction of 2% is taking its toll in a lot of areas, from Library Paris, to our buildings and the like. More cuts down the way will have an impact on the mission of us delivering a quality education to our students. But we will, we will do our best and we will, our teachers work hard every day. And they, as I have said, is it will not come out of the capital outlay fund as I stated it will come out of the general fund we should be able to handle it there because we had some growth in student enrollment this year and when that's factored through the formula of the weightings we should be able to have it and not have to reduce any services to our kids or to our programs at this time
discussion. All those in favor, signal by raising your hand. Good night.